history making season for Texas A&M men's golf. I'm Fallon Appleton joined alongside Texas A&M men's golf coach JT Higgins for the season wrap up of Higgins Hindsight. Coach, congratulations on such a great season. Before we begin, let's talk about the season as a whole before we talk about all the excitement that was last week at NCAAs. Um, I thought we had a pretty good year. You know, um, we won a tournament in the fall and uh, you know, we're, we were ranked somewhere around 15th in the, the fall season. And the spring started off really well, hit a low point in Cabo. Really poor showing, but I think it was a great wake-up call for our team. We rallied back from that. Every week we got a little bit better. Um, we could see the improvement. We could see the confidence rising. And by the time we got to SECs, um, you know, I felt like we were playing our best golf of the season. And, and uh, it was great. It, it made for a really exciting postseason for us. You talk about the postseason. I talked to a lot of your players and they talked about one of your messages being the importance of peaking in May yeah. and that they really sure did. Yeah, I, I think we might have overdone that a little bit <laughs> <laughs> because I, um, you know, the, the regular season is important to us as well. I, I feel like we had some guys that really the only thing they cared about was NCAAs. I think part of that was, was us. We always talk about playing our best golf in May at the SECs and regionals and nationals. But also the sting of last year, losing in the quarterfinals to Oklahoma State, having such a great match. They felt like the, those six wins the year before in the regular season really didn't mean much um, once we got there and uh, the season ended so quickly. So um, I, I think they kind of carried that chip on their shoulder and they were really looking forward to getting back to NCAAs. And one way they got there, they went back to back at the regional championship. You have to be excited how that really propelled them into the NCAAs. Right. Two, two years in a row winning regionals is just amazing. Um, you know, there's a lot of teams and coaches and players that will go their whole career um, without winning a regional championship. And mm -hmm. so to win two was really cool. And then get back to nationals. I think the team had so much experience and they knew that, that how important it was going to be to stay really patient and, and kind of let it come to you that, you don't have to force it to make it to match play. And it's just a qualifier and you have a chance to make it. And then to make to make it again two years in a row and um, to be one of you know eight teams left to have a chance to win the national championship, I, I was pretty impressed with those guys. They did a great job. You talk about this NCAAs. The Blessings Golf Course was no easy course. And for stroke play, they started off really strong. Right. It, it's a beast. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, it was funny. There was a lot of players from all sorts of teams that were asking if even par would get to match play and the, all the coaches that saw it, we were all kind of laughing going, <laughs> man, you shoot even par, you're gonna have a chance to win this thing. Yeah. And so that was cool. It was also, it was so hard that you could also know that about a third of the field was beat before we ever teed it up. Um, the attitudes and, and, the, and the things people were saying, you know, this course is the hardest course I've ever been on. These greens are ridiculous. They're too fast, the slope's too severe, those, those kind of things. Um, that's a bad mentality to go into a golf tournament with. You, you need to feel like every course is great for your game, that you can play anywhere. And our guys had the right attitude. They were um, mentally, they were prepared for that. And yeah, we came out the first two rounds, I thought we played fantastic golf. So you talk about the players' mentality and how that was key for this golf course. How did y'all prepare the team? Well, it's just all season. You know, we play hard golf courses all year. We played Olympia Fields, we played Shoal Creek, we played Merido up in Dallas, Georgia Tech. It, it just goes on. Cabo even was a test. Playing traditions every day. They're used to that. We hold them to a pretty high standard. We expect them to be able to keep it around par on any golf course. Um, and knowing that we're going to play some places where, where 74 is a good score. And it was this week. If you, if you could keep it under 74 at the Blessings, you were doing a great job and you were beating the field by two or three shots on some days. So they, they knew what was ahead of them and they knew um, that we don't really make excuses, that we just get out there and, and we play and we get, put the best score on the board that we can, um, you know, stick to the process and, and just build on it round after round, hole by hole. And they really did stick to the process. They made it back to the quarterfinals, back to back, which was a program history record for this team. Yeah, there's, there's not many teams, you know, I, I'm not sure the exact number, but you know, we've had match play now for 11 years. And, and I want to say, I think there's between 27 and 30 teams in the country that have even made match play. Um, we've made it three times now in those 11 years, and, and we're pretty proud of that. Obviously, you want to go as far as you can, so losing was, was really tough to take. But I knew afterwards, in, in hindsight, we'd look back and go, you know what, this is... Uh, this was a pretty good year and a really good national championship for us. And, um, you know, one or two putts go a different way than we might have been playing for national championships. So it was great. We've got to talk about <laughs> yeah. Dan Erickson's yeah. clutch putt yeah. on 18 to take the round of extra holes. Back up the hill. How you like me now? Wow. What a response by Dan Erickson. 
golf fans that have followed Vanderbilt know that their fans and their parents and they're very boisterous. Um, mm -hmm. And so coming down to 18, both uh, Dan and his opponent, Will Gordon, um, faced about 10 to 12 foot putts that they had to make for par. Um, Will putted first and, and made his putt and the place exploded and they were, you know, yelling. They thought they had won and it was over. And then Dan faced his putt. And uh, man, it was just amazing. It was dead center the whole way. And we got just as excited and made, made a lot of noise ourselves. And so it was, it was so cool. It was, it was match play at its finest, you know, um, those guys going head to head and um, both knocking down those putts to go to extra holes was, was fantastic. Earlier in the season, we talked about preparing Dan for being able to handle the moment and pressure moments like this. How do you think he handled the tough? I think he did pretty well. You know, he still didn't play great in stroke play, but you know, we fed him to the wolves. You know, he's our number five guy, and we put him against their number one guy, um, and in the hopes, and really in the hopes that we were able to get our one, our two through four, easier matches. And and we knew we were sticking Dan with a big challenge. And, and for him to go 19 holes, um, I'll tell you this. So he's still disappointed. He knows he should have won that match. And uh, he had a great opportunity on 16 um, where he could have taken a one-up lead and closed him out on 17. And instead, he was one down after 16 mm -hmm. and, and made, made a great par on 17 to even the match heading into 18. So it was really back and forth. And um, that's the way it goes in match play uh, sometimes. But but he had an opportunity to win that match. And, and uh, you can't really ask for much more than that. Your senior Chandler Phillips, he has sure made his mark on the record books for Texas A&M men's golf. Yeah, he, you know, you can make a pretty good case that he's the best player that's ever stepped foot on campus. He's got the most wins. He's got the lowest stroke average. He's going to be named, in, you know, I think probably a second team All-American this year. So it's going to be a three-time All-American. He's three-time All-Conference, three-time Palmer Cupper. I mean, the last three years have just been amazing. <laughs> um, we're going to miss him. He's he's uh, not just not just the play either. You know, he's a great guy to be around. He's a great team guy. Um, he's fun, you know, um, he, he, he loosens the mood and um, on and off the course for everybody. So, I um, mean, he's a great competitor. So all of those things are hard to replace. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but at the same time, we wish him the best of luck. I think he's gonna be a tremendous professional. He's gonna have a great career and he's always gonna represent Texas A&M and that's pretty exciting for us. So speaking of another player, we gotta talk about Sam Bennett. Yeah. I mean, what a breakout season yeah. for your freshman. Sammy had a great freshman season. He was all SEC. Freshman team, played in every tournament except the first one um, this year for us and, and just did a great job. He was so consistent and so steady and you just don't see that out of freshman. He plays beyond his years. He's so calm and cool out there. It's just, it's amazing. And, and he's learning as he goes and you can see it every day. He gets more and more confidence doing more and more things. Uh, he's got more shots around the green. He's got, he's able to flight his ball better. There's just so many aspects of the game that he's picking up so quickly that I have no doubt um, he's going to be one of the best players in the country the next three years and um, you know, build a team around him. So you're going to have him and a majority of the rest of your lineup coming back for this 2019-2020 season. Yeah. Um, you have to be excited looking forward to next year's play. We are so excited. We've got four starters coming back in, in Sam and Brandon Smith, uh, Walker Lee and Dan Erickson. You also got Josh Glee and Reese Ramsey who have played a lot of golf for us. We redshirted William Pacey this year. He has made unbelievable strides. Um, feel like he's going to be able to contribute next year as well. And then we're bringing in two great freshmen. Um, Jimmy Lee is ranked in the top 10 in the nation, uh, freshman coming in and, and just won the state championship of Texas, wow. um, which is pretty exciting. And then Matthew Denton is a freshman from Austin Westlake, which their team won the, net, won the state championship, I think for the third year in a row, maybe longer. Um, and he's just been a huge, he's been a four year starter for them. And, um, whole family of Aggies. He's dying to get here and, and ready to leave his mark on Aggie Land as well. So we are excited about the whole group coming back and um, feel like um, replacing Chandler is not going to be easy. I think we're going to have to do it um, in the aggregate, you know, with, with a whole lot of players getting a little bit better. Um, but it can be done. And, mm -hmm. um, and the team can, you know, get back to match play again next year and maybe have a chance to win another national championship. This team definitely proved that they can take on the place without Chandler next year. And I think they have a bright future ahead. So thank you so much, Coach. Thank and you, Fallon. It's been a fun year.